This is the Ryder and Lisa Replay. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Check out the Southtown Hyundai Advantage at southtownhyundai.ca. What are you going with today, Evans? Underrated, buying things that look like knockoffs. I was at Walmart yesterday and I bought these white boots that have black laces and black soles. And they were $30 and they look exactly like those white Doc Martens that everyone's Mm. wearing. They're so nice. And they don't hurt your feet. 30 bucks? Are you kidding me? Yeah. No, they're nice for 30. I wouldn't say they look like Doc Martens. Yes, they do. When you told me that, I was like, "Mm." I will Google white Doc Martens. Oh, this will be good for the radio. People will love listening to you. Ryder, try and tell me this doesn't look exactly (laughs) like them. These Doc Martens are $250, man. Whoa. Yeah. Okay, so knockoffs. You're going underrated. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll agree to terms. Go to Walmart and get the white Doc Martens knockoffs. 30 I'm, bucks while they last. I'm going underrated as well, and it's when somebody gets something that's coming. I just think that's an underrated thing to happen. So the story that I just read that literally made me laugh out loud was there was a preacher at a university in Alabama protesting with a huge sign that said, Women belong in the kitchen. Wow. And a woman who wasn't in the kitchen came up and punched the preacher in the face. And <gasps> I, I'm not one that like that thinks violence is the answer most of the time, but like I just think in certain situations when somebody needs to learn a lesson, okay. And this was a, one of those moments. So, he deserved to have what was coming and it came. That's an underrated thing. I think that uh a really good punishment for him would be if I cooked for him. He would hate <laughs> everything he ate, and then he'd be like, okay, never mind, I'll cook. <laughs> okay. Are we at a time now when if you see somebody mistreating a hostess or a server, a host or hostess, that you can like say something on their behalf? Because I feel so bad for people that have to now implement the mask mandate in their restaurants and like are also having to check people's vaccine records. That's coming up very soon Mm -hmm. to see if they have both their shots. I was at a restaurant with my parents last week when they were in town and there was a family that came in and they refused to put on their masks at the door. And the server was like, well, I'm sorry then, but you're not allowed in. Mm -hmm. And this place was particularly responsible in the fact that like, they ask you to keep your mask on until your drinks are served. So they even went like one step further in protection. So they're obviously being very careful. That's how they want to run their business. It's a private business. That's their call. Right. And you don't know their story, their background. If maybe they lost someone to COVID or they have someone in their family that's in the hot. Like you have no idea what the reasoning is behind it. It Correct. could just be that they just want everyone to be as safe as possible. But it yeah. also could be more than that. So. I had an itch to turn around and say what a server isn't allowed to say in that moment. Because that you, you can't really, when you're running a business or working for a business, mm-hmm. tell people to like grow the hell up and put on the mask for your sake. I see it in your hand. So you know you might have had to wear it in here. You're supposed to be wearing it by the provincial rules. But... You're going to put up a fight before you put it on to walk to your table. Well, then it's just awkward, especially because that's your server for the next hour and a well, half. Well, exa- what are you doing? Anyway, <laughs> That like, are we at a point where we can start saying things or is that like a super Karen move? I don't know. I, I had a close call. I was at the knife store on White Ave recently. Cool. I know. It was cool. Lisa got me a very nice knife, a uh, chef's knife for my birthday. I walked in. I was like, give me your best knife. The guy put gloves on and like laid out a blanket to lay it on. I was like, whoa. And then you're like, you saw the price tag and you're like, give me your second yeah, best. I was knife. like, all right, <laughs> let's actually start from the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> what do you got? Didn't have gloves on for that. Right. Just kind of threw it at me. Yeah. So anyway, I'm in the store and uh, the guy working was very diligent for when people first walked in to offer them hand sanitizer. And this was the day before the masks were mandated again. Sure. So this guy walked in and, uh, But they, as a business, wanted masks on still. And so he's like, sir, do you mind putting your mask on? And the guy's like, the mandate doesn't start till tomorrow. He's like, okay, uh, I'll let you off, but can you at least put some hand sanitizer on? He's like, no, no, no. 
And I, it took everything for me to not take the knife. <laughs> Just be like, listen to what he has to say and like hold it up. <laughs> so I get what you mean. Like I've never actually said anything. Right. I'm curious if our listeners have. Yeah. Have you have you had that moment where you did say something? Because I I was so close, but I, I bit my tongue. Like to me, it's more about these poor employees that have to exactly. deal with this kind of encounter numerous times a day, likely, than it is about upholding the rules of the province. And not like, every person is the same that works in establishments. When I was talking to the guy that was helping me with the knife, I was like, you must be losing your mind dealing with people every day. He's like, oh, I don't care anymore. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a good way to... But not everyone's know. like that. Some people yeah. are very anxious. They're scared to go to work every day. So we just need to remember to be kind. And Yeah. Do you think that table that you saw walk in without their masks on at first that put up a fight. Did they eventually put masks on? Yes, and then, they had to to go to their table. That was the rule of the restaurant. And do you think that that server knew the entire time that they were serving this table, like, oh, I'm not getting a tip? Yes. Yeah, oh, also that. It would be that. so frustrating to work in the service industry sometimes or in any type of place where you're dealing with customers. Play 107. We're getting a lot of texts in from people that work in different types of areas like... Um, uh, grocery stores mm-hmm. where apparently they're not allowed to enforce it. They're just mostly that like they want to encourage you to put one on. They'll they offer one. It, yeah. They'll offer one. And and Laura said that it's hard because other people who are wearing their mask get mad at the employees. They're like, why are you allowing that person to not wear a mask? Like they want them to act like police officers. And they're like, you can say something like we're actually not allowed to get angry at people. Jen says she works in a hospital and being polite doesn't work. Instead of asking someone to put a mask on, you have to say, hey, your mask isn't on. And she said it works so yeah, much that better. Sounds like it would work. Right? Don't give anybody an option if it's not an option. Don't give them one. I love the stories of people who have their young children say something to people. Yeah. Like I've heard of people saying like they'll be in an elevator with their six year old and then someone without a mask and the six year old will be like, why aren't you wearing your mask? (laughs) And I I honestly think if a child said that to me, I would be mortified. Yeah. I would feel so small. Well, do you remember when we were driving downtown and there was the protest going on? The anti-mask protest, and my daughter was in the back of the convertible and had her mask in her hand. She's like, does anybody want one of these? She's giving them all thumbs down. She's so cute. Uh, Mindy wrote in saying, we need your support. I work in a medical clinic. We are verbally assaulted and berated every single day. It's hard enough to work in healthcare without constantly being beaten down by anti-maskers. We need the public to have our back, so please say something when we can't. It's like the bully on the playground all over again. Please speak up. Please defend us. We are tired. We are weak. Please stand with us to help protect our friends and neighbors and say something. Love you guys. Wow. That's that's really powerful to hear. There was a restaurant uh, manager that texted in as well. She says, as a restaurant manager, if you stood up to somebody harassing the servers, I would definitely be hooking you up. (laughs) (laughs) People are going to be going in there just pretending to try and get some free wings. (laughs) Hey, uh, I just let somebody walk through here without a mask on. I told them to leave. So uh, what's on special? (laughs) Or set it up with your friends. (laughs) Yes. And then you have to leave. Uh, What's up? So you were asking if, you know, people speak up. I do all the time. Well, you're a nurse, right, Dale? You bet. And, you know, I have friends that are working in the ICUs and, you know, it's heartbreaking for them. Mm -hmm. They're emotionally burning out. And I sit there and I I think, you're asked to wear a piece of cloth across your face. Like, honestly, really? That's difficult for you? Wash your hands? What? I know. People are like up you, in arms. What were like, you doing before? I know. They're like, oh, I got to put hand sanitizer on. What is this? You know, I mean, I do it like a thousand times a day. I don't even think about it. Ryder and Lisa. Some, something. Good. Woo! Brought to you by A&D Tutoring. Wonder, learn, grow. For more info, visit andtutoring.com. Sometimes we tell you stories from around the world, or if you have a feel-good story and you want us to talk about it, you could always hit us up and tell us what's going on here in the city. Christine texted us very early this morning before her shift to go uh, work as a nurse, 
And she said, there's actually going to be a convoy for nurses starting at 9 a.m. at Millwood's Town Center and driving around, hitting up all of the hospitals in the city. So there's a group of people with their vehicles that are meeting at Millwood's and decorating their vehicles, and then they will start their journey. Christine said she would be there, but she's stuck at work. Have a great day. Amazing. I love that. Thank you for the support. And obviously, they'll be aware enough not to get in the way of yes. any emergency vehicles. Absolutely. Unlike some others that have been spending time around the hospital. Anyway, yeah, that's uh, that's awesome. Tell me something good. My story is uh, very cute, and I didn't even know this was possible, but uh, there was a Doberman Pinscher that had a fresh batch of puppies. And the family also found an abandoned kitty at around the same time as these uh, these puppies were, were just getting their legs under them and whatnot. And knew that the kitty needed some food as well and so decided to just try it out when most of the puppies were sleeping and mom was by herself uh the doberman the uh, owner of the dog brought this kitty over to see if by chance it would work with the dog mom and dog mom nursed (laughs) and is now nursing this kitty along with her batch of puppies stop it doesn't seem to mind at all so that's ruby is the name of the dog and there's a a picture. I mean, I can't show it on the radio, no, but let me see. There's this little <gasps> kitty that's just cuddled in next to all these Dobermans now, all his stepbrothers and sisters. There's nothing cuter than when dogs and cats cuddle. Nothing cuter. Yeah, I, I would agree with that, actually. Tell me something good. Came across something pretty awesome. Brittle Star is his name. A lot of people probably already follow him on Twitter. Election day is coming up fast, but seriously, does your one vote even matter? Why bother voting? Well, Because lots of terrible people vote. That's right. (laughs) Think of the worst of the worst who seem to benefit off the back of regular people's suffering. The ones who don't care about anyone else but themselves, except maybe their shareholders. They vote. But not only them. The person who cut you off in traffic, they vote. The person who didn't hold the door for you, they vote. Or they're American and just visiting. The people who start sentences with, I'm not racist, but they vote. They all vote. All the terrible people vote. That's why you need to vote. You're not terrible. Probably. I don't know for sure. You might be. If you are, just ignore this video. But if you're not a terrible person, your vote is super important. So vote. Where are you at with PDA? Because it feels like a lot of celebrities now are using their platform and stage to just like tongue kiss each other. I get a little gross. Like you look at Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly and I haven't seen them have like a nice normal kiss yet, but I've seen them like lick each other's eyeballs. I, (laughs) I, I don't mind the PDA. I would say my rule or what I think should be the rule is if you can do it in front of a child and it not be weird, then go for it. So, like, hand holding. Yeah, but children are grossed out by, like, a peck. No, I know, but, I mean, like, gross for just (laughs) in general. (laughs) Yeah, like, you watch Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox, like, kissing the way they do in the public eye. Oh, my gosh. Imagine being Megan's kids. I'd be so embarrassed if my mom was on the (laughs) tabloid. Yeah. Doing that, I'd be like, Mom. Mom, quit licking him. With your boyfriend. Like, (laughs) I'm getting groceries with dad. We're both embarrassed. Oh, honestly, right? Oh, yeah. And And like, Courtney Kardashian's the same way with Travis Barker. They're super cute because they were friends for years Mm -hmm. and now they're dating. But yeah, the PDA, and she has like four kids. And I'm like, oh my gosh. (laughs) Is that a good rule, though? Like, if you would feel comfortable doing it on a family movie, then do it in public. Like, kissing, sure. Even like making out a little bit. But like, I don't really ever see people making out in public unless I'm in a bar. And I haven't been in like a busy bar in over two years. It's hard. It's really hard now with the masks. (laughs) Yeah, they get they get so damp. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, there was actually a TMZ article yesterday of Kourtney Kardashian and Travis Barker, and it was titled Busted, and it was them like behind a building just giving her. Real? Well, like making out, but like okay. <laughs> really intensely, and they just don't care. We have def- different definitions of giving her. Sorry. <laughs> I do think it is important for partners to show PDA in a sense, especially if they have children around that are watching. Like it's nice to showcase. Love. Exactly. Sure. 
Autumn wrote in saying, absolutely no PDA. I can't. I get so embarrassed. Holding hands is okay, but that's as far as I go. Now, I wonder if that does root from being around people that never had public displays of affection. So when you start dating someone that loves it, Mm -hmm. maybe you're just uncomfortable because you're not used to that type of uh, love language. That's fair. Mandy says, uh, my partner and I are both good looking women. And I've had enough of the, oh, my God, hot lesbians <gasps> comments, oh no. mainly from dudes that we try to avoid it unless we're at home. Perverted men wrecking everything. Yeah. Don't you get the <laughs> hint that, like, we have no interest in you or your opinion? Isn't right. that kind of clear here? <laughs> but you have a story about something embarrassing that happened with you and, and your man recently. Fire away. We were at the at the superstore, and he always goes into the biggest butt grab and the manager looked over one day and she's like can't you just hold her hand like everyone else because he was just holding your cup in your butt okay but also who holds hands in the grocery store like you go this way and get the eggs i'll go this way i'll get the produce like who has time to hold hands conquer and divide get your hand off my derriere Uh, we were talking about this because of some of the celebrities right now are just getting gross with each other. Yeah, and they don't care at all. They don't care. Des had a really funny text. It's 780-784-7107. PDA is not my thing. She says, a small kiss, holding hands, etc. That's it for me. Maybe a little marking of territory at a party is necessary at times. Not peeing, just a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's a, actually a valid point. Eh? You kind of need to let everybody know who you're with. To lay off? A little lick on the face, maybe? This text is a first-time texter. Thanks for listening. It says, physical affection is one of my main love languages, so PDA is a yes for me. But also, my ex, mask-presenting lesbian, used to have a hand on me almost the entire time, anytime we were out. Being so obviously and unapologetically gay felt kind of like an important statement. Cool. There you go. David's on the phone. You had an accidental PDA. I don't know what that means. You're going to have to break it down for <laughs> yeah, us. Yeah, what? I'm in the Penticton uh, campground, and I've got an old basic uh, tent trailer, and they just had uh, four bolts to hold up the four legs on the corners. So I don't know. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and my wife and I are in there. And uh, all of a sudden, the two front bolts give loose, and so the, the, the tent trailer tilts to 45 degrees <laughs> middle of the day and uh so there i am at 45 degrees inside trying to find something to put on and i get outside and the guy two stalls over he's looking at me i'm i'm probably looking really embarrassed he's looking up and he's the one wearing the big <laughs> eating <and> grin <laughs> so, so so i felt a little bit better about that but, but anyway yeah in the middle of the day, and the, I don't know how much the tarp was shaking and rattling before that, but uh, at any rate, that's the way that ended. The guy that kind of saw things, uh, did, did he end up seeing your wife leave the tent trailer yeah. a little while before, or did he just think you were in there by yourself? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I never asked. <laughs> that's awesome. Let him think what he wants to think. Good for you. That's right, Lisa. <laughs> Thank you for the call. Yeah, that neighbor definitely thought he was just having an SDA. What's that stand for? A self-display of affection. (laughs) We got to talk with Jake Ryan, our afternoon host, whose kindergartner is wearing um, something, a a very funny dad joke on green shirt day at her school. (laughs) So let's check in with them. Hey, good morning. You have an angry daughter. Oh, man, I tried to get her into a Green Day band shirt that I got yesterday from my local T-shirt store that makes T-shirts, and I thought I was being all awesome. And, oh, my God, she hates the Green Day shirt. So she says she hates the Green Day shirt because it's not actually a green shirt. It's white. (laughs) Yes, but it has the Green Day Dookie album cover on it. Yeah, I know. It's a great shirt. It's so funny, but she's not happy this morning going to school. No, she said she hates the album cover, and I even tried to play her Green Day and all kinds (laughs) of songs, but no, man, she wouldn't budge. Oh, man, we laughed so hard. We think it's a really funny dad joke. I put a lot of effort into it, too, yesterday. I called everywhere trying to get a Green Day shirt so I could do a dad joke on the teacher, you know, to try to impress her. But Someday she will find this very funny. Yeah. I agree. Right now I just feel like I walk a lonely road. (laughs) 
she might actually find it more humorous when September ends. You know what? She'll one day realize that this is the time of her life. I am a Canadian idiot. <laughs> yeah, we'll wait for her to come around. <laughs> Play 107. So Health Canada tweeted out saying that they've officially renamed the three vaccines. The Pfizer vaccine will now be named Comirnaty. Yeah, so here's what you need to try to do if you want to know how to pronounce that one. Just get drunk and say the word community. <laughs> Comirnaty. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> the Moderna vaccine, which I always thought was like really pretty. Plus, that's what I got. So, you know. Yeah, like you could even name a little girl Moderna. Moderna that's a beautiful name. <laughs> so cute. It is now named, get this, Spike Vax. Mm. No, I don't like that. It's scary sounding. It's like an evil Pokemon. That was, I, I'm not here for that. My nickname when I used to play volleyball. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Oh, no, that was Spike Max. Maybe that could have been your nickname when you were trying to pull off the Recede Hawk. Remember you tried to do like a Mohawk, but your hairline was going back? Yes. That'd be a cool nickname for that. Mm, thanks for bringing that up. And then the AstraZeneca vaccine is now named, bear with me, Vaxevria. Vaxevria. Mm, that's mm. pretty. I'd name a kid that too. Yeah, it's really pretty. My daughter, Vaxrenia, and Vaxzevria. my other daughter, Moderna. Vaxe- no, it's not Moderna anymore. It's Spike, Spike Vax. Vax. That's the coolest one for sure. I'm going to go and get one night. Like, I'm already double vaxxed with Pfizer, but I'm going to go. Can I get a Spike Vax? came across one of the funniest tweets I've ever seen today, and I needed to read it. It's a little childish, but it's worth it. Some people are so funny on Twitter. We don't even deserve them. Okay, what does it say? I hope this is true. It's just a a recap of something that happened to them. I forgot my mic was on. Zoom call. And I farted in a Zoom class, (laughs) and it made me full screen. No. So everyone knew it was me. Because when you're talking, the screen goes full. Yeah. Like if there's like, yeah. Oh my gosh. It must have been loud. (laughs) Imagine the moment when you become full screen after that. You know, it's a good thing the system here on the radio isn't when you make a noise, your mic turns on. Because Ryder's microphone would be on all morning, trust me. Alberta Children's Hospital is closing 75% of their operating rooms. And they're saying that life and limb procedures only for our kids because the doctors are off to the ICU to treat people with COVID. It is a very disheartening thing to read. Very upsetting. Maybe it's what some people in the province need to wake up when you hear something like that. You're like, oh, maybe I should. Like, I was blown away when I found out a fellow slow pitcher last night just hasn't gotten around to it. Like, isn't anti-vax. Just hasn't had time Just for doesn't it? think, like, what? What? Yikes. Yeah, so get to it. Especially, like, listen, if you're anti-vax and you're very strong with your beliefs, I'm not going to change your mind. No. So I'm just asking the people that, like, are probably going to get it and are just waiting for the light to turn on. The light's on. Maybe they're scared of needles. Okay, I'm scared of needles. And if you're listening right now and you haven't been vaccinated and that's what's holding you back, I didn't even feel it to the point where I was concerned that he forgot to put it in my arm. Because I don't like to look. Mm -hmm. And, like, the rest of the night I was like, what if if he missed? Like, what if... (laughs) That's literally what I was thinking because I did, didn't feel it. And then the next morning when my arm was sore, I was like, all right, there's some confirmation there. We've come a long way technology wise with needles. Like, honestly, when we were young, it was like a huge needle, the prong of a fork. (laughs) They do all the all of the vaccines at once. Right. Didn't they do that? Yeah. That's why some of our parents have like the circle. They have a scar on their arm. But now it's like the needle's so little, you barely feel it. Lisa. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Play 107.